Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to today's video. Does this desktop wallpaper look familiar? Have you seen it before? Do you think it's pretty? I think it's great. And in fact, it has been used before on Skywave Linux version 2. These are the antennas of the Near Earth Network ground station in Alaska. I recently had a request from a loyal user for version 2 of Skywave Linux. He just didn't like the i3 window manager, wanted to go back and use an older version. I told him version 2 probably has security vulnerabilities that are just not good to take a chance on. Plus, I'm not really sure where I put the ISO files for that one. I made him an offer to give him an updated version of Skywave Linux version 4, but instead of the i3 window manager, any desktop of his choice and any background wallpaper. His request was for this wallpaper and for the GNOME flashback desktop environment. So that's what it is. And in fact, if you look over here, you can see um, it's all very uh, retro style. All very retro. But it works pretty nicely, and I liked it so much that I put a BitTorrent file up on skywavelinux.com so any of you out there who would like to use this can download it via BitTorrent. Again, go to skywavelinux.com, look for version 4.3 flashback. And this is it. So I don't want to spend the entire time talking about Skywave Linux Flashback. What I'm really interested in talking about is TwitGrid. About one year ago, I made a video about this utility here. TwitGrid, it is somewhat similar to TweetDeck, but the person who uh, created it uses NuKet for his username on GitHub, says it actually works better. I like it. I've never used TweetDeck. I've only used this, and I like this quite a lot. It allows me to look at multiple Twitter feeds at one time. It's a little bit cumbersome, though, because you have to edit the HTML file and, and manually write in the Twitter feeds. These handles have to be written in by myself on this computer and by you on your computer if you're going to use this. About a year ago, I thought that was just a little bit too much for my lazy self. So I wrote a script which would allow me to select from a list by topic. And when I chose a topic, it would throw in five Twitter handles related to that. And they would be displayed in the browser. It's great. It's very fast and it's very convenient to use. There was one problem though in that it was not very convenient to make changes to. So when I put this in Skywave Linux or Mofo Linux or Catbird Linux, any of those, the uh, end users would have to edit hard-coded information on the topic and the Twitter handles. It's not very easy. It's actually a bit of a pain. I thought it was a pain. So I changed the script. I split it into two parts. One part is a bookmarks file containing these Twitter handles. The other part is the script which processes the data and writes the HTML file and opens the browser. So it's still very fast and it's much more convenient. In daily usage, you simply select Super T in Skywave Linux or the other distros, or if you download it yourself, you can call this script any way you want. This is the graphical mode using Rofi. There's also a um, command line mode. I'll show that to you here. Just enter twit grid lowercase and the list comes up. It's the same list that you just saw in Rofi. Simply select one of these 
hit enter and the script will open a browser showing the selected topic and a series of Twitter feeds. Now to uh, make the more convenient version I had to make a few changes again. I split the one script into two parts. One is a file. I call it all topics. It's really a series of bookmarks. The other part of this is the script itself which will read these bookmarks, if you'll call them that, and process them. It will read them and then write them into an HTML file and open the browser. Pretty cool. Let's look up close. The all topics file. It's one line per topic. The very first item, the first column, is the topic terminated with a comma. And then a whole series of Twitter feeds. We've got uh, some thinking people, some open source intelligence, InfoSec, Linux, ADSB monitors, all kinds of different topics that I put in this one as an example. If you're using this, you can put in any topics that you want and any feeds that you want. Again, it's one line per topic. The topic name is play language, terminated with a comma. The Twitter feeds are all separated by a space. The script itself is written in Bash. It's GPL licensed, GPL version 3. Anyone can use it. Anyone can share it. Transmit it on. Make changes. My request is if you make changes and it's a good change, make a pull request. Send it back so I can incorporate it here and make this better for everyone. There are some notes about what the script does, how to format the topic list in that other file which I've already shown you. Going down in the script, there are a couple of important variables that are set right away. One is the path to TwitGrid. This is a folder which contains the HTML file and some other components which are necessary to render it properly in your browser. And then the path to the topic file on my system. It's in my home folder in the documents subfolder. There it is. And then there's a command to open your browser in a new tab. I've chosen to use a very generic command to open that browser tab. You could use Firefox or Vivaldi, whatever you use for your browser. Moving down beyond the caution for anyone who wants to play around in the script, there is a function called get list. This is used if you do not use a predefined topic but want to enter manually a group of Twitter handles. We'll talk more about that later. The script operates in two different modes. One is the command line mode. The other mode is graphical using Rofi. So I had to define the operating mode. You go into the graphical mode by putting GUI, G-U-I, after the name when you call the script. For example, earlier I called it TwitGrid, and this came up. TwitGrid GUI brings it up in Rofi. So that's what the operating mode selection is for. The script will then read the topics and Twitter feed information into an array. The array is called options. And then it will open a menu, either Rofi or FZF. You'll make your choice from items in the menu that shows up. There is a bit of 
fine-tuning, a bit of editing and removal of junk that happens after you select your topic. It takes out some empty spaces and uh, line breaks, such stuff as that. If there's no selection, the script simply ends. Um, if things match, in other words, if your choice matches an actual topic, then it does uh, a bit more editing what's said. And then uh, if the script is unable to get the profiles, says something bad happened, something went wrong, and it exits with an error. If things are okay, then it will either um, continue and write that data into the HTML file, or if you have chosen to write in your own Twitter handles manually, then it will run the function called getList. And you've seen that up here very briefly earlier. GetList, it creates a group of user-defined Twitter profiles. If we're operating in the graphical mode, then Rofi comes up and asks you to enter one to five Twitter handles. You could actually enter more this is an arbitrary choice, five. I think it works well, but you are not limited to that. Likewise, if we are not operating in the graphical mode, it's going to show up in your in your terminal, and it will ask you to enter one to five Twitter handles, and it's going to read that list into a variable. If you don't enter anything, exits. And if everything is okay, well, profiles, is the profile list which you've just entered. With that data, the script is going to write the data to the HTML file that your browser opens. It writes two items into that file. One is the um, title tag, which you will see when you are looking at your uh, tabs in the browser. And the other one is the list of uh, Twitter handles. It writes those in. And then after it closes the file, it comes down lower in the script and it starts your browser. And then it exits, it says bye bye. Actually, it doesn't say anything, it just simply exits. Let's um, quit this, quit that, and let's do something here. Open source intelligence, I have so many that I follow. There are two groups of them. Notice that it is pretty quick. The time is mostly limited by how quickly this can go out on the internet and pull in those Twitter feeds. So. There it is. In this case, we have uh, Bellingcat, Aurora Intel, Michael Weiss, Gurjon, Eric Toller. Now, the one disadvantage for this wrapper script is that you can only watch one of these at a time. Using the raw twit grid, in theory, you could write multiple HTML files and simply bookmark them in your browser. And maybe you would have, let's say, TwitGrid 1, TwitGrid 2, etc. With this wrapper, you only have one, and it rewrites it every time you pick a different topic. So it's pretty slick. Pretty slick indeed. Um, let's try something else. Let's try a user-defined list. I've come to discover that most of the Twitter feeds are just propaganda, nonsense, maybe a little bit of nifty tech, but mostly just some horrifying shit these last recent days. So I have found one Twitter feed which satisfies all of my desire to pull anything from Twitter. It's called the Fuck Putin Bot. Every minute of every hour, of every day, of every week. 
it sends out fuck Putin or Putin fuck yourself <laughs> in in lots of different languages. I've decided I'm going to learn how to curse in multiple languages and uh, and this is going to be my primary source. <laughs> how about that? Let's see what languages are we uh, swearing at Putin in now. This appears to be Arabic. Um, did I see some Thai on there? Maybe. Azerbaijani. Uh, Persian. Malaysian. Hey, here's one. Malaysian is pretty close to English. Fuck yourself, Putin. So, yeah. You know, back in my younger days, uh, when I was in school and social studies, I got in so much trouble because I was constantly correcting the teacher on mispronounced names of countries. It just drove those nuns absolutely bonkers that I would do a thing like that. This, this young little punk telling them how to pronounce names of, 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 of countries. For example, there was a nun that pronounced Tanzania. She called it Tanzania. And I said, Sister Joanice, it's Tanzania, because I had heard that on the Voice of America on shortwave radio. Instead of doing my homework, I was tuning around on the HF bands, learning this stuff. Got myself in all kinds of trouble. I don't think Sister Joanice is with us anymore in the world, but if she were here today, she would see this and say, yeah, he has not changed one bit. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I terminate this video on TwitGrid and the TwitGrid wrapper. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.